Lindsey Gimbal here, HITP Music. We're at Mass Pearl as always. I'm here with Chesky. Welcome back. Welcome back to Boston. Um, I saw the other day on Twitter you said you haven't been here in a while, or at least you haven't performed there. Um, how's it feel to be back and you know, kind of, kind of what's, your, what's your fan base in Boston? Feels good. It's, it's been well over almost two years, I think, about a year and a half, some change. Um, feels good to be back. I haven't played a show. This is actually my first show outside of Connecticut in almost a year. So. Oh, word. So, hey, the better place, you know, it's um, a better place than Boston. Um, so, you know, shout out to Connor and the Brain Trust yeah, and Mind Spread. You, um, yeah. you know, not only is it a good platform for, you know, our talent in Boston, but it brings, you know, artists like you um, into the city and kind of expose you to maybe a different crowd. Um, you know. Yeah, my, it, uh, I mean, you were asking about my fan base here. Uh, you know, I've played, I think the first time I played Boston was probably four years ago, maybe five years ago. I was opening up some tours with uh, Soul, AWOL One, some of the cats that we worked with on the label. Uh, I've done some house parties in Boston, nice. Lewis Logic. And, and, yeah, and we, you know, I've had I've had a history here, you know, with the cats at Underground Hip Hop. Cool, cool, you know, that's so yeah. That's a that's a beautiful thing. Nice. Cool, so um, yeah. So I guess any fan base I have is kind of really driven from that. Nice. So, so some of the guys you mentioned, um, they're part of you. You're, you know, you do more than just music. You run a label. Yeah. Uh, Fake Four Records. Um, put out projects with um, Open Mic, Ego, um, Blue Sky, Black Death. Def, um, a wall, um, you know, for someone like myself that's interested in, you know, running a label, kind of first of all, talk about kind of like how you got started with that and kind of like the daily process of, you know, being a musician and running a label. I think it started because uh, I was in a band based out of LA and we actually got signed by Snoop Dogg's management team. Oh, nice. <laughs> and it sounded nice. We got a little, <laughs> little guarantee. I, I mean, Guarantee, little advance and stuff to make a record, and got in the studio, made this record. But it was really difficult to kind of have things our way. They had a, they had their own vision for what they wanted to do, and for our band and how they wanted to represent us, and that's fine. But it it, it kind of made us break up, and so we we ended up releasing an album barely kind of just came out and we broke up and and at that point I was like I think I want to start my own label um, because I think I I could probably work within this with music of this genre at least like left field hip hop indie rock stuff, stuff like that I could probably do it a little better than they did even though they had all the connections and everything I kind of started learning a lot about it so in 2008 we were approached by some friends of ours who ran other small indie labels. Um, my friend ran a label called Squid's Eye out of Ohio. He was like, okay, we would manufacture and distribute these records for you if you started a label, because we just have that faith in you. And then another friend ran a label called Grim Image. They got involved in our first release as well and with some funding and sort of just went off from there. Nice. So um, off camera, before as we spoke, um, you said kind of, you know, kind of in 2014, you know, it's kind of, it's hard when the label because a lot of artists don't want to associate with, you know, a label, they can just go independent. Um, what are some of the issues that you're facing, you know, releasing your own music and releasing, you know, some of the artists and the labels? Yeah, I think more and more artists, rightfully so, are considering going fully independent because those outlets are there. They, they can't really see the benefit of having a label on their side. Um, I'm all for them. Being independent, that's how we started. That's why we started the label in the first place. But I feel like more and more, because of digital distribution, because of access to certain marketing, let's say, from the smallest thing to the money on Facebook posts, hiring a publicist, and 
you can have that capital built up as a individual artist, that's kind of what the label is for you. If anything else, you know, the, the only thing that a label really has is a community that you know, that can introduce you to. It, it gets a little bit difficult because, you know, because of the, the, the technology, the journey, sort of telling, you know, it sort of allows people just to speak to and that's, that's a beautiful thing, really. but at the same time for us, who are trying to sustain the community and sustain um, our business, it, it's difficult because we have to invest behind projects that we think are, are going to at least do well. And we, we like to invest behind artists that work really hard for themselves as it is. And a lot of those same artists, they don't necessarily really need a label or want to work so that's kind of that's kind of the Cool. So let's um, you know, you're working on a project right now that you're gonna release soon. Um, just you know, what's the whole you know, concept and kind of what can we expect from this project? What's the name and release date? I uh, I don't have a final name on it yet. Okay, so no <laughs> name. <laughs> I don't want to say something before it's really finished. But yeah, I I did a whole uh, album with my friend producer The Factor, and he's a producer out of Canada. Just the list goes on, but um, it's a uh, it's a real personal record. It's it's like uh, sonically, it's it's more mellow than a lot of hip hop records we hear. Very, it's almost anti electronics in a way, as far as the sound. The sound of it is meant to sound like it's not necessarily from this era. There's a lot of folk influence with the. Give me a little Kanye West on. Just, just <laughs> something outside of this era, era, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I definitely don't feel like sounding like everybody else. Like coming out and having a bunch of SoundCloud trap beats yeah. as my backdrop. You know? It's just not. With a beat in the beta. I love that. I love that shit too, you know, but it's just. That's just not what I do. And, um, yeah, I'm pretty proud of it. I think it's coming together pretty well. It'll be out in November. All right, cool. So in a couple of months. Yeah. So, um, actually, more than a couple of months. But, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow, but. And that'll be on Fake Four as my record label. So. Nice, nice. So, um, you know, with any artist, so just a person in general, there's always going to be times when you kind of have setbacks and challenges. Um, you spent a little time in prison. Um, the story is not really important, but um, just like kind of bouncing back. When you, you know, when you came back, um, you know, after spending like, I believe, like, eight or nine months, um, where was your mind frame? It less, luckily, it was less. Time. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, sorry. It's not going to sound cool, but uh, <laughs> a couple of years. <laughs> um, but no, just like, you know, bouncing back some, from something like that, like kind of where, where was your mind frame um, when you know, all that was over and you were back to being a free man and kind of, you know, not just being a musician, but being a person. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's, uh, you, you kind of summed it up well. It's like back to being a person. You don't really, sometimes when you get caught up in, in the fast lifestyle, like Twitter and social media, like you kind of forget about regular life and you get caught up in this kind of bullshit illusion of trying to get acknowledgement and so and so and so and so and career building. And I realized when I got out that that is, or actually when I was in, I realized it was not important to me at all. And I mean, yes, I, I'm really lucky to be in a working position and still have fans that support me, but I don't necessarily care about, I don't know, the hunger for the career building. So that was a big thing when I got out. I had some common issues for ex cons or whatever, like uh, and super anxiety. I had a lot of anxiety, I had a lot of paranoia. I mean, I don't want to get too into that. But yeah, adapt to technology, right? Just kidding. Yeah, I mean, 
you, you go you go months and months without you know technology the first time i actually turned on my phone it blinded me um, and you know we're so used to it we look at it all day but when you go when you're away from it for a while it slows your life down and the technology there is an anxiety attached to it i think that we don't think about it we're so accustomed to the speed of this world so for me a big part of readjusting to being out was uh, just that, just trying to adjust to the speed of it, you know, trying to deal with my own paranoia, I constantly thought the cops were out there, which in part made it true, but now you're out, <laughs> I'm out, I'm out, I'm feeling way better, way healthier, I'm, you know, I started exercising in jail, and I'm just feeling, yeah, eating better, things like that, just trying to um, so, so what's the next album coming out? Um, take four. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, the next release we have coming out is Sadistic's Ultraviolet. It's a, it's a really dope piece of an album. It features Tech Nine, features oh, Idea. Um, Sticky Fingers from Onyx is on it. This dude, Nacho Picasso. I I, yeah, I know him from uh, Blue Sky. Blue Sky Black yeah. Death, yeah. They came here, actually. Church. I played a show with them. At Church Boston? Yes. Okay, I that yeah, that, that must have. Um, I didn't just go there. years ago. One of my friends was. He actually put me on the uh, Nacho. And that was a dope show, yeah. That was cool. cool. But yeah, so Sadistic's record, July 1st. That's the next record on Big Four. And uh, got that. Dope, so, you know, wish you the best. Thank Looking you. forward to the upcoming uh, release, but before we even get to that, yeah. good luck tonight. Hope you it's kill it. I'm sure you will. Awesome. Yeah, definitely. Um, so thank you. Okay, thanks a lot.